Hi, this is teacher Molly from the Junior Museum and Zoo um, at Palo Alto, and I wanna talk about the life cycle of one of the coolest animals, the frog. Frogs are really special because they're amphibians, and that means that they can live both in the water and on land. So frogs have four legs, and they have lungs to breathe with. They can also breathe through their skin, which is pretty cool. And they can swim in the water, but they mostly live on land. When they're ready to have their babies, they lay a cluster of eggs in the water, in a pond. Um, so the mama frog lays her eggs, and then she leaves them alone, and she hops away. Now, if we look at what the eggs look like, they don't look anything like chicken eggs. All these little black dots are individual embryos and they have this protective jelly layer, this coating around them. And then all of the eggs are in a big gelatinous jello bunch together, floating in the water. And they hatch and they don't follow mom onto land. They hatch as tadpoles that live completely in the water and they swim around. Tadpoles look like they're just a head and a tail, but actually all of their organs are inside this round part. You can see they have two little nostrils, eyes, this long tail to help them swim, um, a mouth. Mostly they eat algae, which is a type of plant. Um, and then they're going to start to develop lungs and legs and arms. The only way for them to go from living completely in the water to living on land is if they have both gills and lungs to breathe through at the same time. So right now they're mostly breathing through their gills, um, but they can also gulp air and breathe through their lungs a little bit if they need to. These two little bumps are just the beginning of legs. And then they start to develop their back legs and they'll have these little bumps that are gonna become their arms. And you can see they don't just look like a head anymore. See this round baby is getting a little bit older and you're starting to see a little bit of the body. And we can tell how old a frog is by counting the number of toes they have. And that's how we tell how old the tadpole is. So that one's also living in the water. It develops front arms, they pop out and this tail gets shorter. So the more arms and legs they have, the shorter that tail gets. And they're ready to both start coming out of the water and moving on to land and become an adult frog. You'll notice adult frogs don't have tails at all. They don't really eat plants, they eat bugs. Sometimes they can have really long tongues that go out and stick bugs and bring them into their mouth. And sometimes they have these amazing back legs for hopping and they jump and they catch bugs entirely in their mouth. And they move on to land. They live mostly in land. They'll mate with another frog, they'll come back to the water, and they'll lay their eggs. All right, so that is the very, very cool life cycle of the amphibious frog. I actually studied frogs in college, and this part is for the older kids, because a lot of what's happening with COVID-19 and coronavirus right now pertains to the research I did with frogs in college. I was studying frogs that, um, we're getting a disease called ranavirus. I studied wood frogs, which live on the East Coast and up in Canada, where it's very, very cold. Wood frogs actually completely freeze over winter, which is very cool. Not many animals do that. Most animals hibernate, but they actually have a way to freeze. But what we were seeing were frogs that lived in temporary ponds. So when they were babies, when they were tadpoles, they lived in the water during the wet season, in the dry season, those pools would dry up and vanish, and that's when they would be adult frogs on land. And when the it rained and those pools came back, these little ponds came back in the wet season, that's when the mamas could go lay their eggs. And this horrible ranavirus would come, and a lot of the tadpoles would get sick, and in some pools, some of the tadpoles would get sick, and some would live, and in other pools, all of them would get sick and die. And so we wondered, why do some populations completely die off while others live? And we thought it might be because of de-icing salt. This is table salt, not de-icing salt. But the idea is in really cold areas in the winter, the roads freeze. There's so much ice and snow that you can't drive your car on it, but we have to drive to get to work. So people actually pour de-icing salt on the road helps melt the ice and snow and then that ice and snow washes off into pools and ponds right next to the road 
where these tadpoles live. So I want you to imagine a little tadpole in the water and suddenly there's salt, sodium chloride in the water where they live. And they are getting oxygen out of the water with their gills and getting and filtering that oxygen and getting it into their bodies. And we call it osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is the process of their gills filtering things out of the water into their bodies. Now, if there's salt in the water, some of the cells, those little building blocks your body is made out of, some of the cells in their gills are now filtering chloride and there's less cells to filter oxygen. So there's not as much oxygen getting into their body. Frogs, tadpoles, us need oxygen to move. It, oxygen is part of the process that we use to create energy and move our bodies. So they're not getting as much oxygen and that makes them weaker. They need to go up to the surface and gulp oxygen because uh, they're not getting it through their gills. They're spending a lot of energy um, in this osmoregulatory process of filtering chloride. And so they're not spending a lot of time digesting food because eating and digesting takes up a ton of energy. So they're not growing as quickly. Now, they can still live, they can still become adult frogs until they get ranavirus. If you introduce a virus into this population that is already fighting off salt, they're not gonna have enough energy to fight the virus and they're gonna go kaputs and they're all gonna die. We're seeing the same thing with corona. Young people who get COVID-19 get sick, but most of the time they do pretty well. Now, if you have asthma, um, pneumonia, weak lungs, a weak heart, if you have heart problems, if you're very, very old and you get COVID-19 or corona, you're already, your body is already fighting and it can't fight a heart problem or asthma and coronavirus at the same time and those are the people we see dying just like these poor little tadpoles dealing with salt and a disease that's why this virus is scary and that's why we want to protect our older populations another thing we're doing is social distancing and we know that frogs in the wild get diseases and i wanted to know in college if they can recognize if another frog has a disease if they're gonna do social distancing, if they're gonna recognize that one frog is diseased and stay farther apart. So what I did is I took metamorphs. Those are frogs that have just come out of the pond onto land. They've metamorphed into a very small adult, they're juveniles. And I took half of them and I exposed them to ranavirus and I kept half of them healthy. And then I put two infected ones together two healthy ones together and a mixed pair where one frog was healthy and one frog was diseased. And I had them in a container with a clear top and a grid. And I could see what square of the grid they were in and I checked them over time for a week and I recorded where they were in the grid and how far apart they were from each other. And what I found was that the two infected frogs tended to be pretty close together and the two healthy frogs tended to be close together but the mixed pair where one was healthy and one was infected, on average, were further apart from each other. They kept their distance. And that might be because of the sickness behaviors we see animals do. When animals are sick, they don't move as much, they get really lethargic, and they tend to hide. So they actually social distance, they stay apart. And that's because if you're sick, you wanna protect your family members. You wanna protect your mom, your brother, your babies, frogs are the same way. So even though it's hard for us right now to be social distancing, we see animals doing this in the wild and that social distancing can actually save those populations. And it's important to recognize when another individual is sick or if you might be sick and to keep those distances. So we're learning from our frogs.